Hello and welcome to module three, video three. So let's continue. We're finished off with the reconnaissance attack. And so let's move on to the axis attack. But please don't forget to take your notes and uh, submit them when we're all done. All right, so when it comes to um, axis attacks, this is when you are going to exploit the known vulnerabilities in authentication services, for example, FTP services web services, the purpose of these attacks is to gain access, to gain entry to web accounts, confidential databases, and other sensitive information. So there are, you can use password attacks and spoofing. So at least write that down. Access attacks are you, you may use password or spoofing attacks to do that. All right, uh, social engineering attacks is an access attack for example, that attempts to manipulate individuals into performing actions, right? So please write that down. Write at least the first statement so you'll know what social engineering is. Again, it's an access attack that attempts to manipulate individuals into performing actions or divulging uh, confidential information. Uh, this is like somebody sending you an email asking you to solicit information, making a phone calls, whatever right? Trying to manipulate you to giving them confidential information without you knowing. All right. And here are the different types. Please take a snapshot. Pretexting, phishing, spear phishing, spam mails, uh, something for something else. Quit, you know, quit for pro. I'll give you something. You give me something else. Baiting, impersonations, tailgating, when somebody chasing you and they want to get into, let's say, uh, a room and they don't have access to it. Uh, shoulder surfing, somebody watching you. It could be a camera typing uh, your keyboards. Dumpster diving, somebody goes into the trash can and get, gathers memos, information about who they are, where they, their offices, their phone numbers, their addresses. Um, so you can use that information to call in to reset your password, for example. That's why you should always shred all the information um, no paper. Everything is really pretty much confidential. Again, take a snapshot of this. Now, social engineering, you can have all of these. Um, you know, never give your username and password credential to anyone. Never leave your username or password and so on. Never open emails from unsolicited resources. So all of this information, you need to make sure that the users have, that the users have, that the users know. So uh, make sure that user information may have to be conveyed. All of this have to be conveyed. Let your users know that uh, this actually exists, not only um, at work, but also at home. So if you have kids, your spouses, your girlfriends, whoever, they need to know about social engineering. So make sure if somebody calls in, Never to ever give them information, never to execute, never click on an email um, on an, for example, on an attachment if it has an ex executable file. If uh, Another thing, um, IRS never calls you and asking you for your social security number. Right? They always send you an email, for example. So if somebody calls you or sends you an email, Telling you that uh, please click here to set your account. Don't ever do that. IRS will always send you information in the mail, not even an email. All right. So uh, all of this information, you know, you need to user users need to follow and make sure they uh, they know, right? All right. So uh, moving on, denial of service attacks. Well. There are two ways, overwhelming quality of traffic and maliciously formatted packets. You can do that with denial of service attack. The idea behind denial of service attack is you want to make sure that users do not gain access to the resources or maybe, you know, for example, uh, not getting access to your access point, your wireless router. That's a denial of service attack. Attacking a server, an e-commerce service, for example, somebody attacks Amazon server. And you know, just sending requests on and on and on. That's a distributed denial of service attack. If you're getting attacks, a whole millions of servers coming into the Amazon server asking, uh, sending you know 
um, bogus requests, legitimate users won't be able to access the server, right? And that can cost them billions of dollars sometimes. All right, so now let's take a look at some vulnerability, IP vulnerabilities and threats. Uh, please check this down. You got the ICMP attacks. You got the ping of death. If this could easily be done, um, just keep pinging somebody. Just you can write it into a batch file or a loop, and just do it from several PCs. You can almost create a denial of service attack where the computer becomes very very slow because it keeps wants to respond. That's one of the reasons that Windows 10 has. Um, a statement in the firewall that will not respond to pings. Um, amplification and reflection attacks, address spoofing attack, man in the middle, session hijacking, which is very difficult to do, by the way, a session hijack. But if you are able to get into a session that's already been um, enabled, you'll be able to access a lot of the information. You won't be able to send anything to the user but you'll be able to gather a lot of the data. Man in the middle attack uh, can easily be done, but unless your data is encrypted, they'll be able to see everything. And you won't even know. The sender and the receiver doesn't know that there's a device between them that's capturing all the data. Uh, the address spoofing attack is, you know, stealing somebody's IP address or MAC addresses, you know. And, you know, you can actually... Using Mac Changer, you'll be able to use someone else's Mac address and gain access to the system. Go through firewalls or go through firewalls that have Mac filtering, for example. All right, all of that can be done, believe it or not. And we'll do we will do this not in this class. Again, in the ethical hacking course, you'll be able to see how to do this, and of course, address all of these different vulnerabilities. Um, so. And you could do, by the way, ICMP is using the echo request and echo replies, the IPing. Remember, the Internet Control Messaging Protocol, there's plenty of different types of messages that you can send to gather information, right? It's a control. It's like a manager. So you can use ICMP to gather a lot of the footprinting. See what operating system you have. Do you have a Linux? Do you have a Mac OS? Do you have... A Windows ba based machine, so you'll know, you know, what kind of tools that you can do to attack a specific system. You need to know what kind of operating system that it's running and what the security. You can do all of that. Um, here are the different types of ICMP attacks. So please capture that as well. So put that in by, as part of your notes. Um, now, amplification and reflections attacks, we talked about that using the NTP. Address spoofing attack, there are uh, non-blind spoofing and blind spoofing. Moving on, I think that's okay. Now, let's talk about the TCP header. Here's the TCP header. And uh, the TCP header, this is the segment, right, that's being transmitted. So you can actually catch it. Here's the control bits. Um, whenever your data goes out or in, using these control bits, I can keep a state of the actual data that's been running. So stateful firewalls will use the, these control bits uh, so they can control and who initiated access from inside the LAN or not. Um, Remember, TCP, please write this down. I know we've discussed this in, uh, in our first course. TCP is reliable, flow control, and connection-oriented. That's what stateful communication means. Remember, it does the three-way handshaking. And uh, reliability, meaning the receiver is going to check the packets as the segments and make sure they are good, and if they are not, it's going to ask the sender to retransmit the flow control. Again, the receiver always tells the sender to either increase or decrease the amount of segments, the amount of data that he needs to transmit. All right? So that's that. Now, what you can do is just, with a connection oriented, just keep sending a sync signal. You know, this is trying to make a connection. This guy acknowledges you, but you're ignoring it. You just keep sending a sync signal. Keep sending sync signals. 
and the server's trying to connect to you, but you're ignoring that acknowledgement. And therefore, they, you, it's like uh, taking the phone off the hook where somebody who you're calling is trying to communicate back to you, but you're ignoring it and you just keep calling, right? And that's a sing attack. Okay, again, by the way, that's been taken care of with uh, firewalls, so you don't have to worry about that as long as your firewall is up and running. All right, so um, UDP segments, pretty much there's not a lot of labels on the UDP segments because UT, UDP, UDP is typically um, used inside a LAN. Um, and it's also used for voice over IP, and it's also used for um, uh, streaming videos. But it has its vulnerabilities as well, right? You can use the flood attacks, again, with the low orbit, and then there's plenty of tools out there that will that will um, that will exploit UDP um, protocols. You know the applications that use UDP, such as TFTP, DHCP, DNS, and so on. All right, so let's take a look at the IP utilities. Um, when it comes to the ARP, the address resolution protocol, remember ARP is when you send out an ARP request requesting the MAC address of a user, knowing that they know their IPs. Okay, so here's something to remember. Any client, please write the second, uh, second bullet point. Any client can send an unsolicited ARP. You don't have to be asking, so I can send... Uh, to the let's say this is how I can create a man in the middle attack. I can send an ARP reply, right? Even without the gateway asking for it, to the gateway and telling them that there's a victim in here. The um, the MAC address of some victim, some guy, is my IP. So now the router thinks the MAC address of the victim is my IP. Every any time that they router needs to send information to the victim he's going to send it to me then i go to the victim and i send him and also an arp reply telling him that your gateway ip address is also me right so now the victim sends information to me if he needs to send data to the gateway and i send it to the gateway and then the gateway sends it to me if, if he needs to send the data to the victim before i send it back to the victim so i'm a, i'm a man in the middle by doing arp poisoning or uh, you can easily do that, right? So I can capture all the data that's going from the victim to the gateway and from the gateway to the user without them knowing, right? Unless the data is encrypted, this is, can easily be done, all right? And um, so you got to be able to protect against that. Cache poisoning, uh, the ARP cache, which is when you do an ARP request, you immediately remember the ARP... Um, ARP, I'm sorry, the IP address and the MAC address of the users, right? You put them in your computer memory. You can go in there and change that too, right? So ARP poisoning attack can be passive or active. Passive ARP poisoning is where the actors steal confidential information. Active ARP poisoning is, when, um, is where the threat actors modify the data in transit or inject some malicious data. Okay, let's take a look at some DNS attacks. Uh, the domain naming services attacks, which is something that you should know. Uh, remember, the DNS is the one that resolves IP addresses to names that you have. So uh, there is the DNS cache poisoning attacks, DNS amplifications, and DS utilizations. So please take a snapshot of this and also a snapshot of that. The stealth attacks when it comes to it with the DNS. Uh, you can do the DNS tunneling. Tunneling is a place where non-DNS traffic within the DNS traffic. The method often circumvents security solutions, right? And uh, so this DNS tunneling works for CNC commands sent to a botnet. So we're not going to do that. All right. I'm going to stop right here.
and please write everything that I asked you to write up and I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to submit the information I asked you to take.